Now that's good juice. What is up, connectors? DK here. Hope you're having a great Monday. Mom's out there. Happy Mother's Day. Today on Connected Us TV, we have a fundamental question that we have to answer for you, the viewer, and that is, what is the connection economy? So to answer what is the connection economy, the first thing we need to do is go over what other economies have we had, or more importantly, which one are we in or were in, but now we're not because the connection economy. So basically, we have to do a little bit of background, a little bit of history. So from the beginning of time, we were hunters and gatherers, and that was our main focus, hunt, get food. But then we moved into the idea of an agrarian economy where assets were big. That's where animals, and we had animals that could plow, and we could actually work the land, and we could stay put somewhere. And slowly but surely, we moved from that agrarian economy to the industrial age, and that's where we had the business efficiency of things because we had the steam engine, and we had other locomotives, and we had other power sources, and we can actually produce on a wider scale. But then the commodities that came from the industrial age slowly moved us into the information age, and that's where data was king. That's where things like the internet started coming around, and you have the beginning of the internet of things. But then we reach the connection economy. And the idea of the connection economy now is the social aspect. So technology has brought us back around to this concept of relationships, trust and relationships being the key source of information and information power. So what is the connection economy? It's trust and relationships. It's the idea that the ice cream shop, the dot com, needs to have a great art gallery somewhere near it in its neighborhood, in its community, the dot org. And that dot org to be successful has to have a great institution of higher learning or high school, middle school, elementary school that talks about the arts, the dot edu. And then that dot edu, that needs to have a great government that is actually pushing policy, making education strong, making the arts something that's just as important as the STEM and making all of this work in the larger sector, the dot gov. Having all those different things working in unison, making that economy stronger. Because for every time one of those pillars rises and gets a strength point to it, it should equate to the others. So that what you have is a continually growing community, a community of equals that the .com, the .org, the .edu, and the .gov all know that they have a role to play in making the economy strong and making it prosperous. This is not just good philanthropy, this is good biz. Now I can hear some of you out there already saying, well, DK, wait a minute. This is kind of how the economy works. What's the difference here? Hang on, I'll get to your question. The difference is why. Why do you have this connection? In the models that we all know, connections were usually based upon projects. You need something done, you find partners, you start dancing. For example, a nonprofit is looking for a grant. They go through their grant book, they see a foundation that has a grant that fits their scope, their need, it's got some money to it, you write the grant, a few months later, bam, you got yourself a connection between the foundation and that nonprofit. Money is distributed, a program starts, reporting starts, and you have something. But have you really connected? Is that really considered a connection? Or is that just a transaction? In the connection economy, you don't need the transactional function to be part of this relationship. The relationship itself is the connection. And from that can spur on many projects. And there might be dollars associated, but there might just be the idea of now we know. We know who the assets and resources are, and we can call on them when particular things come up. But most importantly, we can call on them even when no project is there. It's the ability to say, I have a Rolodex, but then I have a live community. We need to move away from Rolodex and get more into roll in. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> Keep rolling. Like, what am I talking about? So the point is, you have to have a connection within the community. You have to have something far beyond transactional, far beyond the donor, the supporter. The .com to the .org is mostly a transactional thing. .com is a business. .coms have money. They have people. They have time, talent, and treasure. And the transaction is usually that. It's usually the nonprofit saying, hey, can you spare some of those things? But what if it could be based on something different? What if it could be based on relationship and trust and knowing full well that there might not be something today, but there's gonna be something that the whole community is gonna need and we collectively are gonna to have to work together. And for that matter, what if we change the question? Instead of what if we need, what if the question was, why not? Why? 
Why don't we have these relationships now? It makes sense to have them when the moment arises, when there is some sort of program or some sort of new initiative that's coming down the pike. But wouldn't it be stronger to have these relationships at the forefront, before it? It's sort of the pre-thinking. It's sort of the, let's find out what the initiatives are together. And then from there, you can build those relationship teams into specific initiatives and specific groups for specific initiatives. So at one point, it could be a .com and a .org. But at another time, it could be a .edu, .gov, and a .com. And those four pillars could move around with one another. But they always have a centralized hub, an understanding that this collective economy, the connection economy, is theirs. It's a baseball team. You gotta have somebody play first base. You gotta have somebody who's a catcher. You gotta have pitchers. You gotta have specialty pitchers. You gotta know when to move them in and out, when the bat left, when the bat right. If you don't know about baseball, that's all right. Football, soccer, tennis, whatever you want. You could pick a sport. There's probably some metaphor for it. The point is we all need to get in the game. And the best way to do it is to build trust and relationships among the entire community. So what is the connection economy? It's building the currency of trust and relationships and doing it not for programs not for funding not for donor lists and certainly not just because it's the way we've done it always if you say that it is like fingers on a chalkboard we always done it this way this is the way we've always been this is oh. so that's what we mean by the connection economy and we can bring this to your community too so if you're interested Check us out right here. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, at WeConnectDots. Like us on Facebook. And certainly come back here for more videos as we have them. That's all the time we got for today. Thank you so much for coming by. I'm DK. We're Connected Dots Movement. And we're here to connect with you. Take care, connectors. Now batting for the Red Sox number four, Doug Knight. <sighs> Go Sox. I know